Okay, if you're planning to pay for Apple storage, don't. Check this out. Apple storage, four terabytes cost $1,200. Wow, that's a lot for just four terabytes of storage. Thanks, Tech Notice. These guys are actual thieves. That's absolutely ridiculous. What's worse is that it's not actually four terabytes here. You already have 512 gigabytes, so it's three and a half terabytes for $1,200. There. What if there was a better option? Perhaps the same-ish speed option, but a lot more affordable and perhaps you get even more with it. So I found online this guy here, which is an Akasis 80 gigabytes Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosure. Now, the question is, how fast is it and can we actually build something for a better price and get more storage? But not just that. What if we use the SSD enclosure on an M1 MacBook Air, for example? Because obviously we don't have Thunderbolt 5 in there. Is it going to be faster? What about the M3 MacBook Air in here? Or finally, what if we have the MacBook Pro M4 Max absolutely maxed out here? That one does have Thunderbolt 5. What are the maximum speeds that we're getting and how do you build it then? This video is brought to you by us. Yes, I paid myself to tell you that why don't you go also check out our work from home ultimate setup makeover. I had great fun making this video. It was a great time where we could use some very different interesting products and actually give it to a person to use. Also, we used a very interesting PC there, 100% silent at 100% time, even at full load. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the links are in the description below. Go check it out. So then what do you need to actually get this working? Firstly, the device Acasis enclosure here. Now, I spoke with Acasis and I managed to get a discount code for you. Now, if you want to check it out, the links are in the description below and you should be getting a little bit of a discount for you there, which is very nice. Thank you, Acasis. So we'll open this up. All righty. This is really cool blue. Button here, 80 gigabits per second, USB Type-C. Button for fan speed. Now, if you want to just open it, you just pry this open. Boom. And you've got an M.2 SSD slot in the bottom there. Now, if you have smaller size SSDs, you can pop them in there as well. So, we do need this Thunderbolt 5 cable that comes with it, which is really, really nice. And there's some heat sinks as well. I have got a few different types of SSDs here, and we're going to try all of them, which one is the best. There are a few benefits and a few drawbacks here from each of them. So, firstly, we'll start with the Samsung 990 Pro. This is a very solid drive from Samsung. This is one terabyte in size. It's one-sided, so the chips are only on the top, whether whichever size you go for. There's four terabytes of this available and it's fantastic. The thing is, the SLC cache for this one is around 442 gigabytes on the four terabyte model. If you went with the Western Digital SN850X, then that one, the four terabyte model in here, has an SLC cache size of around 600 gigabytes. So basically what that means that if you're transferring, let's say, a one terabyte file, then it will complete the transfer faster on the four terabyte SN850X compared to the Samsung 990 Pro. Why? Because the SLC caching works in a way that it's got this fast kind of write speed at first. So this is able to write on it around 7,000 megabytes per second, both of these drives, if you connect it to a PC. But until the SLC caching actually fills up, so let's say you get to that 440 gigabytes on the Samsung 990 Pro, after that, the drive speed drops down to around 15 to 1600 megabytes per second. That is considerably lower, but the SN850X is able to carry out the fast speeds all the way to 600 gigabytes and then drops down the speed. So if you're transferring extremely large file sizes, then the 850X is a better option here. If your file sizes don't exceed 400 gigabytes, honestly, just look at whichever one is cheaper. But then I've got a third option. I've got this Samsung 9 100 Pro. So this is a Gen 5 NVMe drive. What is going to happen if you put that in there? Because that supports speeds of up to 14 gigabytes per second. That's 14,000 megabytes per second, which is twice the speed as any of these other ones. But the thing is, the interface of this is only 80 gigabits per second. Is it worth going with a Gen 5? Are we going to actually improve some of the random read and write speeds? Let's find out. It's very easy to set up. 
all we have to do is we'll take one of these heat sinks here. We'll take the one millimeter thermal pad. I'll put that on the side for a minute. We'll take the Samsung 990 Pro, pop it in there, push in, click. We'll take one of these rubber pads or rubber nubbins, push it into there and basically just push in, boom, your SSD is installed. But I'm gonna put this heatsink on the top there as well. If we take off the other side as well. So you wanna keep the controller and everything cooled down. Then you take the lid back, you pop it on that side, and then voila, it should be installed. But that didn't make any contact. I'll put another one of these thermal pads on the top. See if that gets any better. Okay, now we have two. Again, the thermal pad solution is slightly odd. So all we have to do now is plug it into that USB-C port. Boom, that little green light in there is actually coming on now. Connect to the accessory, allow. And now there we go, we've got the untitled option there. Now, if you've got a new SSD, first thing you need to do is we're gonna go to disk utility and as you can see we've got something plugged into there so this is the disk for us so this is our nvme that's plugged into there it might be called something different in there but basically we need to make this into a right format so what we're going to do is we're going to erase this we're going to call this 990 pro one terabyte and we're not going to put this as windows file system we're going to make this all if you're using the mac you you want to put this as APFS, unless you want it encrypted as well, but we'll just do this for now. If you plan to use this device between different devices, so Windows and Mac, then you're probably going to want to put this as XFAT. Let's do a test then. I'm going to choose the target drive. Firstly, we just go to, let's say, desktop or documents. So this is internal M1 device speed. We're getting about 2,400 megabytes write speed and about 2,700 megabytes read speed. Now, let's change the target drive to the 990 Pro. Let's check this out now. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. the write speed is faster and so is the read speed faster. We're actually getting faster external speeds than what we have internally. That is incredible. Let's do the anamorphous disk speed as well, if that is possible here. So firstly, internal speed. Internal SSD, we're actually getting a little bit of faster read speed, 3.4 gigabytes per second. Write speed, a little bit slower actually, uh, 2.3 gigabytes per second. But let's change it to the external drive and then let's see if that's any faster. So let's compare internal and external now. Very interesting. Some of the things are slower, some of them faster. So in terms of sequential read and write speeds on the top row here, we can see that the read internally on the left and then on the actual SSD on the right is about the same. Write speed though sequentially on the drive is actually slower external, 1277 compared to the 2300. So almost double the speed internally. When you look at the random 4K read and write speeds of the very bottom row, we can see that the read on the internal is 73 megabytes per second, but then the read on the external is 61 megabytes per second. So the external is reading actually a little bit slower, the random read and write speeds, but then the write speed of the external one compared to the internal one is actually faster, 48 megabytes per second. That's uh, very interesting. Let's undo these and then take an M3 device. So this is the MacBook Air M3 and this has Thunderbolt 4, not Thunderbolt 3. So doing Blackmagic speed tests now on the M3, we can see that interestingly, what's going on? The read speeds are actually slower. The write speed, look at that. No, what is going on? It's slower than on the M1, which is interesting. What's going on? Look at that. So now let's change the target drive to our 990 Pro on the M3. Look at that, 3.1 gigabytes per second and read speed about 2.8. That is really, really good results. Let's do the same on the anamorphous disk mark. Firstly, the internal SSD. Okay, and now let's do the external on this as well. The 990 Pro externally. Let's go. Okay, we completed it now on the Thunderbolt 4. And as you can see, we're getting slightly faster speed. So if we compare Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 4 on this 990 Pro, we're getting a uh, read speed is roughly about the same. Write speed though on the Thunderbolt 4, we're getting almost two and a half times, actually a little bit over two and a half times the actual speed from 
1200 megabytes to 3300 megabytes. The random 4K read is about 18% faster and then the random 4K write is about 25% faster, which is really good news. There's one more thing to check out, which is our MacBook Pro on here. So I've done the internal already. Let's take a look at Blackmagic Disk, about 6K write speed at about 5K read speed. So this is the 500, or is it one, one terabyte SSD in internal SSD on the M4 Max, what I have in there. Boom, yeah, as you can see, one, ter one terabyte internal SSD. The question is, how fast is now the external drive? 990 Pro, we're gonna try this. Look at that, it's even faster. Oh, goodness me. Our Thunderbolt 5 SSD is actually faster than the internal 6,352 megabytes per second write speed and 5.8. That is quite a bit faster. Now let's do the anamorphous disk here speed test as well. Oh my goodness, 7,000 megabytes per second. Oh my word. So now looking at the speed test, on the left you see internal, on the right side you see external. Now, as you can see, the external is in a lot of the cases faster. For example, the read speed on the external one is faster, 7,000 megabytes per second. And then the random 4K read also is quite a bit faster here, 75 compared to 43. The write speed slightly slower in sequential speeds, quite a bit faster on the random 4K, almost double, actually more than double the speed on the random 4K. Now that is interesting. But now comparing Thunderbolt 3, 4 and 5, we can see that the read and write speed sequential are a lot faster. Okay, double the speed at least, if not more. The random 4K read is 22% faster and the write speed is 15% faster. There's some more things to do. Now, let me change it to SN850X, run all these things again, and then 990 Pro, run all of these again, and then we'll see if there's actual any difference if we install a Gen 5 NVMe. So I discovered some bad news. So this Akasis Thunderbolt 5 SSD enclosure doesn't actually support Gen 5 NVMe. When plugging in the Samsung 9100 Pro, nothing happened. It just doesn't recognize it. It does not support Gen 5 drives. Now here's future me who's actually looked into why didn't the Gen 5 work on this particular enclosure. And actually this is not Acasis's or the enclosure fault, it's to do with Intel and Thunderbolt 5. Thunderbolt 5 has a Gen 4 X4 protocol in terms of the data transfer, and that's why we can see 7,000 megabytes per second, but unfortunately it can't support Gen 5. As much as I thought that Gen 5 is Gen 4 compatible in terms of like previous generation, apparently Intel doesn't let you do that. So it's only Gen 4 for Thunderbolt 5, just so you know. But then I did test the Samsung 990 Pro and the SN850X and then Let's see which one is better. Firstly, on all of the different devices, whether you go with the M1, M3, or then M4 to get Thunderbolt 5, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5, you actually do get a speed increase. Now, is it worth it go with an M1 and then get Thunderbolt 5? Probably not. You should probably get Thunderbolt 4 because it's cheaper. And if you want to check out any of these Thunderbolt 4 versions, they are a lot cheaper. I'll leave some links in the description below. When you go with M3, it's probably around the same. You're still going to get about 3,400 megabytes per second read and write speeds. So is it worth going with a Thunderbolt 5? Probably not. Yeah, and I would again recommend going with Thunderbolt 4. You're not going to get that much of a speed increase. When you have a Thunderbolt 5 device, whoo, this guy is actually, as you can see, sometimes faster than the internal SSD on these Macs, which is first time in the history where we can get external SSDs as fast as internal which is absolutely incredible. But then which one should you get? The SN850X or the 990 Pro? There are a few things that you should consider. The good thing about the Samsung drives is that it has all the chips on the top side. So if you put the heating on the top, everything kind of gets cooled on the top. Whereas the SN850X on the four terabyte version, it's got chips underneath there as well, which means that the cooling is not going to be as ideal unless you just sandwich it together and then put like a thermal pad underneath as well and try to do it that way. It's not going to be as as good as in the Samsung one. Now, how much of an issue that is? I would say not as big, but I would say 
5 out of 10, okay? So it's kind of an issue, but not something to absolutely rave on about. The other thing is the actual speed of these SSDs. Both of them are Gen 4 NVMEs, one of the best ones out there. You get 7,000 plus megabytes per second on them. There are a few different reasons why you should consider one over the other. If you plan to transfer very large files, as I showed you before, then the SN850X is a better option for you. If you plan to transfer over 400 gigabytes, single transfer files or single transfer, then the Western Digital is a better option. If you plan to not exceed the 400 gigabytes, then the Samsung 990 Pro is actually a better pick because it's got better random read and write speed, especially if you are using the external enclosure and the drive as a project drive or where you have lots of assets on and let's say you're reading lots of random places all over the the drive you've got little photos and you've got a project in there for example so it makes cache files and cache temporary files onto the ssd and things like that then having random read and write speed on the ssd will make the ssd faster but how much are we talking here so when looking at the sn850x versus 990 pro we can see that the sequential read and write speeds are basically the same i'm seeing slightly faster speeds on the samsung about two percent on the read and about nine percent on the write speeds the bigger difference is the random read and write speeds samsung is about 11 percent faster on the read speed and about 24 percent faster on the write speed so the random read and write speeds are better on the samsung but then there's the last bit which is the price remember four terabytes on apple cost twelve hundred dollars so how much does this setup here for four terabyte cost then? So I'm looking at Amazon here and I can see that this drive right now is going $200, but there's a 20% coupon code, which means that you can get it roughly around $240, something like that. I have looked at Acasis's own website and their homepage has it a little bit more expensive, right? Oh, actually even cheaper. Look at that. It's $289 and then you get 20% code off there, which means it is slightly cheaper on their website, but depending where you want to buy it and if that ten dollars is kind of worth it go check out both of the links so then you'd know like which is cheaper at the time of you watching this video but then let's take a look at the four terabytes of each of this drive then now the sn850x goes right now 279 dollars and the samsung one goes 289 so it's ten dollars more expensive so the sn850x probably a little bit of a better bang for buck but in total, our enclosures here, the drive cost $512. And that's if you buy it off Amazon, everything off Amazon. If you find some deals, it's gonna be even cheaper. And by the time you're watching this, hopefully it's gonna be even cheaper. There's some deals out. So check them out in the description below. But that is $512. Do you understand that this is less than half of the cost of Apple's upgrades and we're gonna get the same speeds. What's better is if you wanna get this eight terabyte size, as you can see here, this Western Digital Black is $600, less than $600, a lot less than half the price of Apple's upgrade. So we're talking about $850 maybe maximum if you want to go with the actual enclosure and a terabyte SSD. But Apple wants you to pay two and a half grand for an eight terabyte upgrade. See that there? Eight terabytes, 2,400. But remember that's seven and a half because you already have 500 gigabytes in there. That is absolutely insane. Imagine how much faster you can get this drive. So if you want to get the eight terabyte drive as well, I'll leave the links in the description below as well. That is incredible. I'll leave it at that.